This episode is brought to you by Cole Hahn. Produced in partnership with Cole Hahn, we brought together the four hosts of Gimlet Media's startup, Science Versus, The Nod, and Every Little Thing for a conversation about creativity, ambition, and making a mark on the podcast industry. I feel better when I'm striving. I can't even remember a piece where I'm like, well, that was perfect. And that whole thing that there is no, there is no perfect. There is no perfect. Mm -mm. No, there is. (laughs) (laughs) To hear this extraordinary conversation produced in partnership with Cole Hahn, go to extraordinariesonthemic.com. That's extraordinariesonthemic.com. Are you ready for another fact buddying? I am so ready for another fact buddying. Comedian Prashant Venkat is back. And I gotta say, I think I knocked his socks off this time. I just want you to listen to how Prashant reacted when I told him today's fact. What? Oh my God. This is Every Little Thing from Gimlet Media. I'm Flora Lichtman. All right, hit me. All right. uh, I learned something this week, honest to God, that shook me to my core, um, which is that I have misunderstood the flamingo my entire life. (laughs) The way you said it made it sound like a, you personally had a relationship with the flamingo, and you're just now realizing why all the reasons it went off the rails. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we all have a relationship with uh, with flamingos because they're so ubiquitous. They're in every zoo. They are. And right behind, I would say, the chimpanzee, it's one of the funniest animals there is comedically. Oh, my God, that's perfect, because this is part of the mismatch with the flamingo. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> they seem like very delicate, dainty pink birds, but they're actually pretty tough. This is flamingo expert Felicity Arango from the American Museum of Natural History. Okay. And I really think Felicity is underselling it. They're savage. <laughs> yes, flamingos are so... Tough. Just guess a crazy thing that you think flamingos might be able to do that you weren't aware of. I would imagine that, okay, so here's here's what I think, right? Their legs look really funny and like a liability, but something tells me that there's something deep and dark about how they use their legs to kill things. You have a, a real intuition for this. <laughs> It's not dark, but their legs do have a special power. Flamingos are adapted to some pretty extreme habitats. I think of them as tropical birds, but they can also live in these high-altitude wetlands, like 17,000 feet above sea level, where it freezes at night. They're in these high-altitude lakes, and the flamingos can freeze inside the wetlands. What? Their legs are actually frozen... Into the ice, yep. What?! And as the sun comes out and it begins to warm up, you see that they start shaking their feathers a little bit. And eventually the ice around their legs melts and they'll get up and they'll just walk away. Oh, my God. That is unbelievable. (laughs) Really? Yes. They can freeze into their bed. Let me understand this. Okay, they're chilling in a pond or wherever they're at and the sun goes away and the pond freezes, and their legs can be frozen into position in the pond all night. And then in the morning when it thaws, they just are like, cool, let's go get some breakfast. That's exactly right. I, how can that be? Okay, so here's the thing. How can that... How? <laughs> I was interested in if there's a frostbite for birds and... It turns out that their legs are covered in keratin scales, which is really giving me that dinosaur heritage vibe. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like a suit of armor. 
That is that is absolutely incredible. I I'm not feeding you this reaction because <laughs> Like, I truly am blown away that I was unaware that they were so versatile in temperature extremes. Yeah, this is really just one of their abilities. So they live in water bodies, these wetlands, that are really salty. We're talking like really extreme salt. So salty that they can be caustic. Some of the wetlands have even arsenic in them. I've also known of researchers that have had some of their skin peel off and react to these extreme chemicals. It's caustic enough that human skin might slough off in this environment. If you spent a lot of time there, I suppose that that could happen. So yeah, they can withstand toxic ponds. My God. Okay, there must be some cool way to study their biology, to understand how it is that they survive these environments. Like what biological mechanism allows them to swallow arsenic and not get killed by it? I don't think we know. I asked Felicity this and it's not clear. Like no one's really solved that puzzle. We. I, it seems like the first thing we'd want to learn about are all the animals that can survive and conditions that humans would quickly die in to kind of use whatever shits on their legs to make awesome exoskeletons for humans. I know. And then it's also like, what if this is the future? We always talk about Earth after humans wipe ourselves out, like this post-apocalypse time. And people always say it's going to be the cockroaches and the rats. They will be the ones that survive. But maybe (laughs) it'll just be like a beautiful planet filled with flamingos. My first thought went to like nuclear holocaust and we're like rum- we're like <laughs> sifting through the ashes and then there's just a flock of flamingos and we're like what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but there's okay there's one more thing and this was the real kicker for me. Flamingos can drink boiling water. What? They live near hot springs where the water is near boiling temperatures. And they can drink it. Man, this this is so crazy because the flamingo has just been this sort of tropical accoutrement to <laughs> our vacations. <laughs> you know, it's always signifying, oh, welcome to this stupid cruise. Here's a flamingo inside a pina colada. But they're these incredibly durable animals. Yes. I also feel like, don't you feel like it makes you think about the plastic pink flamingo differently? Like it's now, it's like a different signal than you thought it was? Yes. Well, it's funny because the flamingo has every right to be the mascot of like a Big Ten university (laughs) for how. (laughs) Yes. And yet no, you know, company or any sort of school would ever be like, oh, we're the fighting flamingos. You know, I, I know, but but why? Why have flamingos been mischaracterized so badly? It's it. I honestly think it just comes down to judging a book by its cover. Like they're just such goofy-looking animals. And then I think cartoons have definitely done them a disservice because you're you're not gonna draw these stick figure legs and then be like. <laughs> But look at, watch it drink boiling water (laughs) (laughs) and then spit it in your face or something. (laughs) The narrative about this animal is so far off from the reality. Yeah. That's what, I think that's what's really, that's what really resonated for me about this. I love that. I, we're on the same page, sister. Yes. I'm so glad. Our circles have, have certainly overcrossed. Thank God. I feel like we really... We can really change change flamingo branding here. I really think so. I think our, our goal should be to try to get a university to adopt it as a mascot. Or a Major League Bay. Let's swing for the fences. How about <laughs> we get a Major League Baseball team to do so? I love that. Let's start a Twitter. Let's start a hashtag. That was said like, it sounded like someone who's never heard of Twitter before. <laughs> the secret's out. Okay, time to go. <laughs> All right, Flora, this was a really good fact, buddy. More Flamingo after the break.
I am here with Catherine Wells, who produces the show. Mm -hmm. And I just want to do a little debrief on Flamingo Mm -hmm. and what to do with the rest of the show. Yeah. I don't feel done with this. I want to figure out who I need to petition to get the Flamingo the respect that it deserves. (laughs) The way you're looking at me right now is scary. (laughs) And I would also like to know why you care so much. Because I think flamingos are undervalued in our society. And I think it's because they're pink. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. We can all identify. Um, Totally. I can identify. And therefore, I am 100% behind the flamingo. I may look like some sort of dainty, weak thing, but I am a monster on the inside. We're talking about you now? I'm just saying that's something that someone could feel. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. As far as we know, there are no mascots that are a flamingo right now, right? I have not been able to find any flamingo mascots. Yeah. So why don't we call the National Mascot Association? Wait, the National Mascot Association. Yeah. Their mission is to provide mascot knowledge per their website. If anyone could tell us how would we get a flamingo mascot out in the world, it would be the National Mascot Association. Yeah. So let's call the founder, Jennifer Smith, who also started a company that makes mascots called Avant Garb. Avant Garb. Hello, Avant Garb. Jennifer speaking. Hi, Jennifer. My name's Flora Lichtman. I'm a reporter. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer agreed to talk. This is how she wants to be identified. Well, I, I, my title is Queen of Fuzz. Oh, Queen of Fuzz. Perfect. Yeah. Quick background. The Queen of Fuzz got her start in the 70s. I made a costume that was the sexy salmon. <laughs> so I was already kind of into high concept costumes. And that sexy salmon led to a, a call. Someone called and said, could you make a chocolate chip cookie? And the chocolate chip cookie was the beginning of everything. Since that cookie, Jennifer has made hundreds of mascots for businesses, sports teams, Avant Garb made the Cleveland Cavaliers mascot, Sir Cece. They were just in the finals, and they, I think they won last year. We claimed that it was because they have Sir Cece. But I think LeBron might have had something to do with it. And there is a whole science to making mascots. I call it nonspecific engineering. We're dealing with foam and fabric and fur, so there's no <laughs> straight lines. You say, this must be 21 and 7 eighths. Mm-hmm. You know, it can, it can be 21-ish. The biggest challenge with mascots is that they have to have a person inside. Mascots would be so much easier if performers didn't have to see and breathe. So I explained to Jennifer that we were calling to get to the bottom of this whole flamingo question, why are flamingos not mascots? Mm-hmm. And I gave her the whole spiel. They can drink boiling water. Wow. And that that led us to this question. Why are there not Flamingo mascots. Well, one would be there's an awfully long neck there. Um, I had not thought about that challenge of flamingos, that their body shape is not conducive for a mascot. There's a lot of structure that has to go up into that long, slender neck. It's not easy. To build the costume. Yeah, it's just not easy to build. Is there a way for me to suggest that the flamingo should be a mascot? You know, I don't know. I have have been campaigning for colleges to have the fighting ballerinas rather than always the bulldogs and the eagles and the warriors and the Spartans and the Vikings. I thought the fighting ballerinas would be really just terrific, but nobody's taken me up on it. Well, how have you (laughs) petitioned? I just sort of mention it casually. I just say, well, what about the fighting ballerinas? (laughs) (laughs) You know what? This is just like the flamingo, I think, because also like ballerinas, they seem delicate and dainty, but they're really tough. Yes, yes, they are. And, you know, they can have tutus. It's worth noting that tutus are often also pink. Um, And... Jennifer is a big fan of pink. I was wondering on your website, there's a lot of pink. Are you trying to communicate something? 
you know, it's a girl business, and I, you know, the, one of the few things that you can do is pick the corporate color. So the corporate color is going to be pink. What's the thing that people should know about mascots that, that people don't know? That only someone who has spent the last 30 years in the mascot industry would know? I do claim that mascots could bring world peace. Mascots, when they're well-performed, which is often, really don't, can't discern at one human being from another. They just, they just see humanity as a whole, and mascots can reach out to people, and people react. And my hope would be people, I don't know, turn to the person next to them and said, do the same thing. They just reach out to them because there they are. Is that a long run-on sentence, and does it make any sense? I, I love that thought. Which one? That mascots can connect people, but that doesn't really solve our problem. No, no, it does not advance our Flamingo campaign. And by the way, there are some lame-ass mascots out there. Like what? I was just chatting about this in the office, and I learned that there's a banana slug mascot. Uh huh. Why aren't you outraged? For who? For the flamingo. <laughs> I mean, who is the banana slug mascot for? Oh, uh, it's a California team. Yeah, whatever. No, of course I'm outraged about the flamingo <laughs> because I think the flamingo is me. <laughs> like, seems, oh, look, it's just that, isn't that goofy and neat? And you're like, actually, <laughs> this is an amazing. Strong, <laughs> confident, warm flamingo. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you a thing. What? I'm that ready. I slash Christine found. Okay, great. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, it's a flamingo mascot. What team is this? University of the Bahamas! <laughs> yes! Yes. Okay, so this flamingo looks the way that a mascotized flamingo should look. Describe it. It's got evil-looking eyes. They did not—this is interesting. They forgot the pink. It's not pink. It's, it's blue. It's blue, which— Cheating. Is a, a little, little bit. bit insulting, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, it has the same problem, but whatever. And it also seems to be kind of rabid. It has, like, a— it looks like a wolf mouse. Yeah. It's growling, yeah. and it seems to be, like, salivating, and it has very sharp teeth, which flamingos don't have. They have the baleen structure, yeah. the filter feeders. <laughs> but anyway, this is, I mean, this is good. This is there seems good. There is a university mascot that is a flamingo. University of Bahamas. University of the Bahamas. Hello? This is Renbert Mortimer, the creator of the University of the Bahamas mascot. R-E-N-B-E-R-T, Mortimer. He's a marketing consultant, inspirational speaker, and artist. Located in the Bahamas. So did you encounter any resistance to the flamingo as a mascot? Yes, ma'am, 100%. What? Why? Uh, What did people say? a, A lot of people felt the flamingo was soft. It wasn't um, aggressive enough. Um, and we kind of just went back to research, and the research revealed answers that the flamingo is not a soft bird. It's not soft at all. Did you know that it can drink boiling water? Yes, ma'am. Those kind of facts kind of kind of silence the crowds. Why do you think people make fun of flamingos so much? Like, why was this such a battle when they're such tough organisms? Well, I'll be honest. It's a it's a dorky bird, you know. <laughs> it has its long neck, it bounces, it has a big body. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but it goes back to research again. Whenever we research something we learn more. Now that you've done all this work giving people the info about uh the flamingo, do people love the flamingo now? Yeah, people are getting excited about it. Like we, we started a lot of chants. Even the girls, they do it like a seagull sound. It's like a, ah, 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 ah. One of the captains of the basketball team, he does an annoying one. Like, ah, 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 ah. 
but it's still something that gets the crowd into the mood. So we're just embracing it, and it's working. So Ren did it. He already did it. He solved our problem. It's done. <laughs> I don't feel that way at all. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel like this is just the beginning. <laughs> Why would we stop now? This is just an indication that it can be done. Well, yeah, I mean, the state, of, I mean, look, the state of mascots in this country is not great, right? There are a bunch of super problematic ones that we could get rid of today or yesterday. Like a hundred years ago, we could have gotten rid of them. And the flamingo is waiting. It's right here. We have the perfect pinch hitter. Or what's, what's it called when you sub someone in? You're asking the wrong gal. <laughs> We've got the perfect trade on deck. Okay, if this flamingo campaign is resonating with you, we have to work together to make it happen. Hashtag yes flamingo. You don't have to write yes in all caps, but I did. Let's get a major sports team to make the flamingo their mascot. I believe that we can do this. Every Little Thing is produced by Flora Lichtman with Christine Driscoll, that's me, and Gofen Mbutubole. Our senior producer is Catherine Wells. Our editors are Devin Taylor and Alex Bloomberg, scoring by Martin Crane. We were mixed by Dara Hirsch, and special thanks to Nicole Pasulka. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at ELT Show, and you can email us at elt at gimletmedia.com. See you next week.